Hey guys, SK here, back with another Clash Royale video. Hope you guys are all doing well. In today's video, we are back on Path of Legends, going for Royal Champion League, halfway up Grand Champion League with Super Next Cycle. I just want to say a quick little shout out to all the channel members for supporting my channel. Really appreciate you guys. If you guys do want to join as a channel member, you can find more info on that in the description below. You get some perks such as my Clash Royale friend links and some exclusive videos on YouTube. Anyways, found our first match here against a Japanese player. Going to be getting right into the matches. I believe I'm six wins away from... Uh, Royal Champions just gonna be trying to get some nice wins today. We do see a Fire Spirit sell things out. Just gonna log. Okay, unfortunately, I'm gonna take the Fire Spirit ship, but I think it's fine. Fire Spirit um, and Archers put, could be like some kind of Pig's EQ deck. I think Fire Spirit usually denotes like an Earthquake deck, I would say, because uh, normally if it was a Fireball deck, then they would have like an Ice Spirit, at least for Expo. And I usually just see Fire Spirit with Hog EQ or Pig's EQ anyway, so yeah, we'll see though. Uh, Knight Archer is gonna counter push and force something out. Uh, Ice Golem, okay, very interesting. Gonna go Expo opposite because Ice Golem is a pretty main counter to Expo. Like, okay, goes for a can. Gonna Archers 2 to defense this down. And should that should be a small lock, I think. Okay, never mind. Archers die. Gonna go for a log last second to maybe catch him off guard. This is a play I love to make, and let's see if it works. Okay, it does work out. As you guys can see, he was not expecting that log. And that's exactly why I love this play. Basically, you catch them off guard by going for a log super last second on something that they didn't expect to die, so that way they don't react in time. All the best players usually place the Ice Golem in that situation preemptively because they know a log is probably coming, but uh, yeah, you can catch people off guard and it's very nice. Um, so Hoggy Key with the Ice Golem archers are looking like uh, not the best matchup, I would say, but since I have a nice lead early on, shouldn't be too bad. Okay, I think my opponent's getting back to Hog, so I'm just gonna go for a low Tesla. I'm actually fine going for a Tesla if he Earthquakes it, because I can probably punish with an Expo, and I think this is definitely gonna be, uh, punish time, although I did take two Hog hits, that was a bit more than I was willing to take, but I should be up Elixir because of that overcommitment with the Earthquake, and I can go for, okay, he somehow... Uh, he gets the cannon down. Okay, anyway, archers should take it out, and then there should definitely be a lock if I log these archers too, I think. Okay, wow, that went as badly as it could have, actually. That was, like, nowhere near as good as I was expecting. I think I should have been more confident with the archers predict on the cannon, to be honest, but, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I am a bit too passive with my predictions. Like, I knew he was low on elixir, he probably had to go for a cannon there, but I just knew that if he somehow made a play of, like, going cannon low, the archers at the bridge would have been a bad play, so I wanted to ice spirit first. But, yeah, in retrospect, that was not really ideal. Didn't get the punish I wanted, but still. I can probably just fireball cycle at this point, because, I mean, Hoggy Q is a matchup where you can actually fireball cycle in, especially if they don't really have a champion. Like, right now he has archers, no archer queen, so it is, you know, kind of an annoying matchup. Like, he has Hoggy Q super fast cycle, but at the same time, I can Fireball Cycle, and Fireball does out-damage an Earthquake. Gonna log this Hog back to make sure I don't take any hits, and then I'm probably gonna Expo because he just went for an Earthquake, and Ice Golem. Oh, just went Ice Golem opposite lane. That's a really big mistake because that's not even gonna tank for the Expo, I think. So this should be on Tower, uh, unless he places something down. Yeah, it's on Tower. That's gonna be GG, I'm pretty sure. Uh, earthquake comes down a bit too late, and yeah, like... I don't know, my opponent's just cycling not very efficiently, I would say, so it's been a pretty nice match so far, and yeah, not much issues. Even though it's not a necessarily an easy matchup, I just got nice punish opportunities, I would say, and that should just be fireball range, 274, I believe, so uh, yeah, I'm just going to go for the fireball. And yeah, that's going to be GG, very nice win against Hoggy Cube for the first match. Uh, not much else to say, just played pretty well, X put the right time, punished accordingly, and yeah, let's get into the next one. Alright guys, for our next match against a Japanese player, uh, let's see what he's going to be running here. In terms of uh, stuff I did, I actually really want to say I really appreciate all of you guys who commented on my last video where I pushed a Grand Champion, you know, with gym advice and other stuff, like I really do appreciate it because it's been pretty cool, you know, talking about this kind of stuff in my videos, like I've actually wanted to for a while, and you know, I've been meaning to make a real life update video for a while, but uh, just never really got around to it, but you know, it's just nice to kind of throw it in, in my normal videos, I guess, because... I mean, I know that most people watch me for Clash Royale, like, obviously, when I post any other videos, they get a lot less views, but, you know, I still enjoy talking about stuff that's actually happening in my life sometimes, like, you know, gym and school stuff, so, yeah, I really appreciate all of you guys who gave me, you know, advice about squats and deadlift form and everything, like, you guys definitely, if you have, like, more advice to give or anything you want to say, absolutely feel free, I would love to hear you guys comment it's gonna ice spirit to pull the heel spirit away from the mini pekka also not sure if you can hear my dog going absolutely ballistic in the background but uh yeah i'm gonna go for an expo uh with this knight and should be a decent push because i think he's not back to his cannon cart yet um uh, archers okay gonna log the archers plus bandit and that should be a lock i believe because uh yeah he doesn't really have any great counters in hand right now e-spirit log i guess he does have like a pretty interesting cycle also not sure why i said cannon cart wait i don't even remember if he has a cannon cart or not um but 
yeah, I don't know. Sometimes when I'm commentating, I don't really focus. Like, I, I, you know, it's hard to commentate while playing at the same time. Like, you know, when you want to focus on what's actually happening, but then also have it be good commentary. Like, it's kind of tough. But yeah, anyway, we got a small lock there. That's the main point of that. Um, but yeah, back to the real life stuff. I guess in terms of recent updates, okay, he does have a cannon cart. Gonna fireball it. Uh, back to the real life update stuff. Uh, not much to say for today's video. I know some people didn't like the real life updates in the last video too. Uh, but honestly, I did really enjoy talking about it, so I'll probably talk about it, like, a fair amount uh, more often, at least sometimes. Okay, this is going to be kind of annoying to stop. I think I have to get back to maybe a knight for the queen. And then, okay, bandit is going to dash, but I think I had to go knight there because otherwise queen ability would have gone kind of crazy. That was not really ideal, though. I think I took a, a lot more damage than I should have, so that was kind of on me. Um, but yeah, today was a project day for school, which means, you know, we are on our project, like, second project now because it's, like, a project-based class, basically like software development and then we're building uh, a portfolio of projects with what we've learned so it's a project day so no one really came into class like I talked to a bunch of my friends they all plan to stay home and stuff so you know there's no point going in if it was just me so I also kind of stayed home but I would say I didn't really do too much like until a while later like that's just kind of how I am like I usually just do whatever um, in the day like I went to the gym I played with my dogs I watched some Netflix um, Brooklyn Nine-Nine like pretty much my favorite show I would say but, uh, yeah, I didn't really do much project work until uh, pretty late. But I did get a lot of pretty good work done today. I mean, I wouldn't say it was a lot because I didn't do, like, a ton. I didn't put in a ton of time. But, you know, I did get a fair amount of work done, I would say. Pretty happy with my progress. Although, obviously, I have to work really hard because this is a really difficult project, actually. Um, it kind of... It's, it's taking a lot because, basically, if you guys are not sure... Or, I mean, if you guys are familiar with it, we're using something called MongoDB, which is like a database framework, and I really don't like it. Like, I'm pretty passionate about disliking it, I would say. Um, and I'm waiting for us to start SQL, which I, we're actually starting tomorrow, I think. Tomorrow's a normal class day. Uh, so SQL is like a better... I'm pretty sure it's a better version, at least. I just really don't like Mongo. I mean, it's not that hard if you really think about it. It's just annoying, in my opinion, but... Maybe I'm just being a bit too biased for no reason. Um, but yeah, anyway, I procrastinated quite a bit on my project. And now, technically, I could be doing project work right now. But I just wanted to make a video and, you know, push to Royal Champions. So that's where we are. And for the gym today, I again tried to, you know, make my uh, deadlift form a bit better. Because I feel like I can definitely, you know, I'm still definitely a beginner, I would say. Like, I haven't really done it until maybe a week or two ago. So yeah, definitely trying to get that uh, up. And it's been really nice so far. So yeah, just pretty decent day overall. But nice win against Bridge Fam there. Not much else to say. That was quite an easy win, I would say. So let's get into the next match. Alright guys, final game against another Japanese player. Um, let's see what he's going to be running, I guess. Uh, in terms of, like, yeah, school stuff. In terms of videos as well, like, I've if it was up to me, I would probably post a video every single day. But it's just, like, I technically could if I really wanted to. But it's just, you know, kind of tough with how busy I am with every day with school stuff. I was going to split archers like that so that the archer walks out of the Lumberjack Rage Radius. Kind of a small, minor detail, but I just wanted to, like, have it, I guess. Because this archer might get some chip. Like, it's better than not getting chip, I guess. If it got uh, in the rage radius, so, you know, small thing. Gonna go for an expo with this knight, just because I kind of feel like it. Um, he goes knight witch the back. Oh, it's gonna be golem, not uh, lumber loon. But he doesn't have enough for a golem in time, because if you play a four elixir card in the back, and you're playing golem in single elixir, you don't have enough for a golem in time if you expo at the same time as the expo player. So, we're gonna get a nice lock, but it's gonna be a tough defense, I think. I think I want to go archers instead of fireball. If I fireball, I don't think I'll be able to defend the way I want to. So I, think, I think I can go archers and then knight. And that'll probably do what I want, because even if he natos, the archer should be far enough to the point where they defend well. Yeah, and I'm going to go skeleton just in case my knight dies. But yeah, that was actually a really nice defense, honestly. And I got a lot of damage. I'm up like a thousand damage. I honestly might expo with these archers just because I feel like being aggressive. And he's not back to his golem. So he's forced to probably lightning this or something. And archers are kind of crazy right now, if, as I'm sure you guys know, like in the meta. Archers are just kind of broken. So uh, yeah, just okay. He doesn't do anything. I'm not really sure. Uh, what's going on? Like, did he give up already? I, if he did, that's kind of crazy. I haven't had a golem player give up on me in the first, like, 1 minute and 30 seconds in quite a while. I don't think I'm lagging. It shouldn't be my internet, so... I guess he actually just gave up. Um, I mean, I guess in a situation like this, I never really, really want to go for the 3-crown right away, just in case he pretended to give up or something. Then I just want to be kind of safe, but it looks like he actually might have given up. Uh, I'm not really sure. I guess I'm just going to slowly go for the 3-crown, though. And I guess I will cut it until we find, or until we reach the end of the match, I guess, because, I mean, he did technically give up, I guess. So, yeah, I'll see you guys. Alright, guys, we found our next match against Broken BS. I want alt champ, he says. I guess 
don't we all uh gives a good luck back so uh i believe i guess that golem player actually did give up that's kind of crazy because i legit have not had a golem player give up like in the first minute and a half like that i think ever or in a long time at least because i mean nothing even went that badly for him like i feel like he could have committed more to that push or maybe just defended my expo but maybe just gave up or maybe just disconnected who knows I do see poison plus dark goblin very interesting i actually should have logged the dark goblin asap i think that would have been better to keep my expo alive but i mean sometimes like right at the start of the match you don't really have to be that aggressive okay and skeletons plus ice spirit for this barrel uh should defend okay yeah i take some stabs but it should be fine i mean i could have fireballed maybe but i'd rather cycle like that so uh, yeah, not sure why he seems so happy about uh, this, like, small lead that he got, but I guess if he's happy, good for him. I'm gonna split archers in the back again, so... Goes for a gang, too, so it is gonna be log bait. Uh, but yeah, what I was saying about that Dark Goblin play, like, usually when you're playing Expo in general, you don't want to play uh, super aggressive at the start, so I mean, if I was, like, super, you know, on point and in in tune with, like, the game, I would have logged the Dark Goblin ASAP. But, I mean, I when you don't know what they have, it's usually best to just let things go, especially for Expos, because you don't even know what they're gonna have. Um, and you probably just want to chill and be safe. Uh, like, now I know he has a Dark Goblin, so now if I know he has Dark Goblin in the cycle when I Expo, I'll probably be ready to go for a log, but, I mean, at the start, even though I technically could have gotten more out of that by logging at the start, I think it's not that big of a deal. Um, also, you don't have to be afraid to use log on offense against log bait matchups. Like, I mean, it's usually good to save it for the barrel if you can, but there are many other ways to defend a barrel, including, you know, what I did just now, Archer Skeletons. You can also go, like, uh, Fireball, of course, as a safe option. You can even go, like, Skeletons, Ice Spirit, with some special timing. Not actually sure on it. Uh, not gonna Expo in the left, even though I want to, because he has a poison. I don't wanna give him poison value on my left side tower, plus, uh, my Expo, so instead he poisons on the right also really nice uh, caught the dark open with my ice spirit so as i said you know now that i know he has a dark open i can catch it more readily um you get a small connection for that it's really nice stuff uh, so you know you with expo in general as the deck like you usually want to find out your opponent's expo counters uh early on and then use that info to your advantage later on you don't just want to you know randomly go for expos everything should have a good reason behind it all your decisions so now that i know he has a dark open of course like i said i'll be ready to try and catch it on my expos, he's being very aggressive right now with that Dark Goblin Ice Spirit barrel play. That 7 elixir at the bridge. Pretty easy to defend, though. And I can maybe go in because he has to respond to this knight, plus uh, he's already come down elixir. Okay, goes for an Ice Golem opposite, fails to cut the knight, and then goes for a mini P.E.K.K.A. I think he's kind of panicking at this point. Gonna Ice Spirit to cut the mini P.E.K.K.A. over into my Tesla. Also, just went for a high Tesla. High Teslas are pretty underrated, I would say. Like, they are a pretty good way of generating advantage uh, with Expo. Uh, if you don't want to go for an expo and you don't just want to keep spamming expos and then also he has a poison so that's technically the anti-poison placement um i'm gonna expo in the middle just because i have archers coming down should be a decent counter push and he's forced to go poison up high which is really nice just gonna archers dps down and he does go ice golem i thought he would go in the left usually if you have an expo uh like this they usually counter it with something opposite lane but i guess he didn't really want to that's fine just gonna knight for the dark goblin log for the barrel that's kind of far back so gonna log uh, further down of course and then yeah i mean this is still a really good situation for me i'm just gonna fireball cycle honestly and I, actually i hit the mini pekka let's just call it a prediction fireball um but yeah like that is really nice he goes for ice golem gang ice spirit at the bridge very aggressive but as you guys can see if you just protect your high tesla like it can do a lot of work okay sadly mini pekka does just take it out in one fell swoop but uh, i mean you know what i meant gonna ice spirit and then archers for the dark goblin notice this placement by the way when i play my knight or archers for example against the dark goblins i usually play it in the corner like that just because that will let the Dark Goblin cross the bridge, and also, um, like, it's just, it basically just lets the Dark Goblin cross the bridge while still tanking for it. Also, one archer gets a hit in the right, not the best Dark Goblin in my opponent's end, and we pretty much have this game in the bag. I'm gonna go for Expo, just because he has to commit to this Knight plus Archers, and then he actually commits quite a lot, more than he should have, I would say. Gonna Skeletons for the Dark Goblin. He goes for a Barrel, I guess, maybe applying some, uh, pressure while defending, but, I mean, it doesn't really work out, because he's already down so much Elixir, and that's gonna be a good game, because we get a lock. Gonna Knight to Protect, and then this should pretty much, yeah, be GG, as he gives it himself. I mean, I'm going to fireball the Goblin Barrel. Like, that, I, that's pretty much two fireballs away. Uh, so I guess he's still going to be trying. But, I mean, there's pretty much no hope for him in this match. I, like, apologize uh, to him for saying it. But, I mean, it's true. Going to Archer's Knight for the Barrel. And then his Fireball Tower. That's going to be a GG. Nice win against a pretty interesting bait deck with Poison. Pretty easy matchup, I would say. And, yeah, let's get into the next one. Alright guys, final game against a Chinese player. Let's see what he's going to be running. Going to give him good luck. And uh, yeah, just split archers first play. So I love splitting archers when I have expo and cycle because I can usually go for an expo uh, opposite lane if you play something in the back. And I'm actually going to do that right now just because I feel like being aggressive. It's usually a bit aggressive if you do it against like a ghost, but if they go for like a four elixir card in the back, it's usually a decent play. 
see a Golden Knight plus Ghost gonna Knight for the Golden Knight and then Log the Golden Knight plus Marcher. And this should actually be a small lock if I'm not mistaken. I can also go Skeletons for the Ghost. I'm gonna Ice Spirit 2 just to make sure I can any chip and then that should be like solid I think. He snowballs my Expo plus Tower but that's gonna be a small Expo lock nonetheless so really nice stuff overall. Looking like some kind of Bridge Bam deck. I don't think it would be three Musketeers uh, with a Snowball in there so just looking like Bridge Bam I guess and yeah pretty nice uh, lead. Uh, I would say in this match, looking like he probably doesn't have a big spell if I had to guess. Usually a deck with this composition, you know, Royal Ghost, Golden Knight, all that stuff, doesn't really have a big spell in it. Goes for Ghost, okay, not going to be super aggressive, you know, I love being aggressive, but I'm going to play safe, just going to knight the back for the Ghost, you know, Knight is usually one of your best counters. To a Ghost, it's going to be three Musketeers, interestingly enough, I was really not expecting that after seeing the Snowball in there, but I guess I'll just Farball the two Musketeers on the right, and then this should be really easy to defend. I can just Skeletons on this Musketeer, and it should fully defend it, so yeah. Unless he has a Heal Spirit, I have to be kind of careful. Gonna hover my Ice Spirit in case, but no, he doesn't have it, so yeah, nice defense there. Gonna Ice Spirit the bridge just to pressure a bit, and then just Log Cycle. Um, goes for Gold Knight, so like, nice. It just spent three Elixir, got some Chip, and four set of Golden Knight, so not bad. I can actually maybe Expo with this Knight, because uh, like, it's gonna be a decent counter push. Okay, I want to snipe that with my Archers, but I don't want to go Archers too soon, just to not give him a Gold Knight Dash. So notice how I went Archers as late as possible just to prevent him from getting a gold knight dash okay goes ice golem too low so doesn't even pull the expo really suboptimal on his end and that should pretty much be gg i'm one off a knight which is really good i'm actually going to get back to a knight for this ghost um and then knight like that and actually okay should have placed my knight better uh the royal ghost did splash my expo plus knight sadly so not the best i mean i probably could have taken tower but still in a really good punish and okay with this hand i can't commit anything except for a tesla against the uh, golden knight because of the archers gonna ice root to the side to maybe let it dash away from my tesla ideally and okay, looks like he's being pretty patient with his dash, but Tesla should take care of the Golden Knight, so really nice stuff there. I'm just going to defense Vexman now that the game is pretty much over. I mean, I got a nice lead, and I don't really need my Expo on offense anymore, so I'm pretty fine going defense of Expo. Especially because he has three Musketeers, like it's just pretty solid. Going to Archers as well. Um, and yeah, overall looking like a really good situation. I mean, I pretty much just have to Spell Cycle at the end. I could even Spell Cycle now if I want. I'm actually going to Fireball because that Marcher is going to die to my Expo. Technically, if you think about it, I am just Fireballing the Marcher because Marcher would have died to the Fireball anyways. Uh, I mean, Marcher would have died to the Expo anyways. Going to Knight like this. Uh, what I love to do against Golden Knight to control it is to try and separate it as much as possible from my other stuff so it doesn't dash all over the place. So like uh, my Tesla is in the middle. So I went Knight off to the corner, uh, leftmost corner to prevent that. I'm just going to Defense Expo again. I think he probably gave up at this point, because, I mean, if I was him, I would give up. Like, you can't really break through a good 3.0 uh, player's defense. So, yeah, just going to get two fireballs down. Actually just going to take the tower with archers, I think. And, yeah, really nice stuff. Against 3M. Got a really nice early lock. Um, and then got a huge lock, like, later on. I'm not actually sure why. I guess my opponent was a bit too aggressive with that marcher, but we take that. That should put me one win away from Royal Champion now. So, uh, yeah, we are going to be one win away. So far, undefeated video, five straight wins. Going to try and go for the sixth win. Uh, six wins straight for all champion would be pretty cool. Let's see what we go against, against a Japanese player. Let's see who's going to be running. Going to give him the good luck and see what's up. Conchi Schwarz is his, uh, I'm not sure what that means, but okay. Going to log cycle uh, on his tower. Fire Spirit, interesting. Could be a cycle deck. Going to split skeletons. Technically optimal. I like to go like, you know, one skeleton for the Fire Spirit and then two opposite lane. Not that they're going to do anything, but just kind of nice to have, I guess. We do see a, a cannon as well. I think I might just expo because it might be some kind of cycle deck like a uh, Hoggy Q. Okay, it's going to be E-Giant. I haven't seen E-Giant with Fire Spirit in quite a while, I would say. It's been a fat minute, but uh, I guess people still play this version, which is not not a good sign for me, because, I mean, number one, I hate E-Giant, like the matchup. Number two, they always have Golden Knight, so that makes it even worse. Uh, I guess those are the only two things I wanted to say. Not sure why I made a numbered list, but, uh, yeah, I really hate E-Giant as a matchup, because it's a really tough one, especially when they have a Golden Knight. Oh, wow, he has a Dark Prince. Okay, he might not have a Golden Knight then, because he's a Dark Prince. Usually, they're kind of interchangeable. That's really good news for me, actually. I think I can... Uh, counter this Dark Prince with Skeletons, Ice Spirit. Don't need to go for a Knight, so that should be really nice too. Gonna Skeletons and Ice Spirit. Split my Archers. Okay, goes for a Fire Spirit, so I have to go Archers up high. I don't want to take that Fire Spirit chip, unfortunately, and of course I still take the chip. Gonna Expo opposite. He might be one away from Ejon if I'm not mistaken. Okay, I'm mistaken, sorely mistaken, and that is going to be uh, Dead Expo, so. Yeah, sometimes, you know, a lot of people ask how to count cycle. There's only, there's no real easy way to do it, like, unless you actually just actively count in your head every single thing. But usually, as you saw just now, uh, for players like me, I just like to, you know, kind of eyeball it and get a general sense of it. Like, I thought maybe he wouldn't be back to E-Giant. 
uh, it turns out he was exactly back to E-Giant, but on that note, I can probably upcycle this E-Giant right now. Goes for a Dark Prince, I think. I could stack archers maybe and counter push off the archers, or I could also just log and then split archers. That's another option I could go for. Goes for a Barb Barrel, so I think I'll split archers. This should be a pretty good defense because one should, yeah, one should walk away, not get splashed. And I can definitely expo now because it's not back to his uh, E-Giant, so goes Cannon. Okay, this should be a really easy defense. Gonna Ice Spirit and then Knight as well, actually, just to uh, hold this expo lock as long as possible. I might even go archers for this eye drag, honestly. Okay, I don't think I need to. Actually, I guess I do because, uh, yeah, I was going to die. And nice, he does go E-Giant late. Really bad play because, as you guys can see, Expo on tower doesn't really care at all about an E-Giant on it because E-Giant's only good against the building if the building's attacking it back. Expo on tower is actually a really good defensive, like, building against E-Giant, believe it or not. It goes for a lightning. That's going to be too little too late. Like, I mean, I can just Ice Spirit Knight for this. Knight will also take care of the Dark Prince. Didn't take any E-Giant damage there. So, yeah, that game is... This game is pretty much over. Uh really happy with that as you guys saw i pretty much just uh bowed my time and like outcycled the e-giant and then went for a really nice punish and i was able to protect my expo which is the most important thing as well gonna toss it down low we went e-giant the bridge which means you won't have enough for a lightning right away especially after going barb barrel he definitely doesn't have enough for a lightning here so he might lightning like now yeah that's way too late though obviously his e-giant's already dead so that's gonna be gg pretty much a perfect win against e-giant lightning there so happy he didn't have a gold knight because that would have made things infinitely worse but he didn't have a gold knight so we take those that's gonna be a nice win against lecture giant and that's gonna be real champion let's go really nice stuff undefeated video six straight wins i believe i'm at like three losses or four losses overall so hopefully i can get a nice win rate to ultimate champion but who knows honestly because i did lose more than i would have wanted to already i'm really trying to get a nice win rate but yeah kind of sucks anyways as you guys can see uh, undefeated video six straight wins i had a comment the other day asking why i only post wins and i mean if i don't lose like what am i supposed to do right like if i don't have losses to post what do you want me to do and i did also win like quite a few straight ones for grand champ too but that's gonna be it for the video guys thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed the video take care and i will see you in the next one